A pretty common situation is that you want to have a collection of variables where there are only unique items in there. And in Python, you can create that using the data type known as a set. So you can define a set with curly braces. You can define it in a number of other ways as well, but here's an easy one. This is exactly the same as a list, except it's got curly braces. And then if I print the type of that variable, it tells me that it's a set. You can also create a set by casting a list into a set using the set constructor, which is a built-in method in Python. So if this was a list, then I could turn this into a set by calling Python's built-in set function on it. And then I get the same set. So this thing looks like a list, but it has a few key differences. Firstly, is that you can't index it. Sets are not subscriptable. So I can't put an index in square brackets after the name of the variable. That gives me an error. And like I said, it says the set object is not subscriptable. And the reason for that is unlike a list, sets are not ordered. So even though I've put these items in in a specific order, they don't retain that order necessarily. It's more just like a bag of variables rather than a sequence of them. Another thing that's different to lists is that sets don't contain any duplicate items. So if I were to change my set, and now it's got several threes and several fours in there, and I run that, and then I print that, you can see that it only now contains the unique items. So all the duplicates were stripped out. I could do things like use len on a set, and what that shows me is how many items are in there after the duplicates have been removed. But we haven't really got to the reason why you would want to use sets so far. So one of the main things is if you want to do set operations like you might have heard of in mathematics. So in maths, there's a concept of having sets, which are groups of objects. And you can look at, okay, is there a intersection of them? Or what is a set like which has the union of those sets? So that's everything in both of the sets or the difference between them, that kind of thing. So sets are typically useful whether you want to compare groups of objects to see whether they have the same things, any overlap, or any sort of thing like that. So I'm going to create a set called A. I'll create a set called B. And then I can do things like A dot intersection B. And if I run that, it's going to show me, it's going to return me another set. And that set is what's at the intersection of these two things. So where do these two sets overlap? Well, they only overlap with element three, which is contained in both of them. So that's what's returned from A dot intersection B. And the same would be if I did B dot intersection A. Another thing I can do is A union. So if I do A union B, then that's gonna give me a set which contains the union of those sets. That's both of them combined together. Again, no duplicates removed because the type which is returned is also a set. Another pretty useful set operation is the difference. So you guessed it, I can do A dot difference B, and that'll give me the difference between those two sets. And for this one, it does matter which set you choose to do the dot difference of and which you pass in as an argument. So what this is showing me here is what's in A, but not in B. If I were to do the other way around, what that shows me is what's in B, but not in A. So you can think of it as asking, hey, what does that set have, which I don't? And there's a bunch of other set operations as well, which you can look up, just search Python set, whatever you want to do with it. There's probably an operation for it or a way to combine them in a way that's useful. One of the things that's probably helpful for me to show you now is that you can add and remove items from a set. To do that, you simply do set dot add, whatever you want to add to it. And then you can see that's included within that set. If you want to remove something, then you can do set dot remove and whatever the item is in the set that you want to remove. And then you can see the item's been removed. If you try and remove something that's not in the set, then this happens. I get an error, a key error 88. That key not found in the set. In some cases, you might have code which doesn't know whether or not this item is going to be in the set. So instead of having to check first before you remove it, you can use the discard method.
this card is going to remove the item if it exists, or otherwise it won't do anything. But it won't throw an error. So that's the set which I had it before. So that set's exactly the same as what before, because there was no 88 in the set.